What is up guys? Before you watch this video, make sure to subscribe and click that notification icon so you can know exactly when a new McDoubles video comes out. So, with that being said, enjoy the video. What is up guys? McDoubles back again with a brand new video and today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be playing on the Laughing Skull server on the Project Ascension Realms. Now, the reason we're going to be doing this is because I want to experience the custom class aspect of Project Ascension in its fullest and most pure form. I want to create a class that is unique to me fun to me and something that I can only experience on Project Ascension. I can't do this on the wildcard realms and if I'm honest a lot of the randomness on the wildcard realms makes taking it in a competitive format very difficult for me to do. It, it makes it very difficult to have fun in my opinion at level 60. So to remedy that I'm going to try to make a character on the Laughing Skull servers and take it very very seriously. I already have my build planned out. I already have my talents in every way planned out and I'm going to be sharing that with you guys right now, and you guys are going to join me on my journey to level 60. So, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I will see you at the very end. Okay guys, so what I am going to show you is my plans for my future character, my Frost Warrior. Now keep in mind, this is to stay in line with a theme while also trying to be competitive, but obviously I am not going to withhold parts of the theme in order to maintain a more competitive stance, and I hope that kind of makes sense. So my vision for this character is a totem summoning Frost Warrior worshipping warrior dwarf warrior at that so in order to accomplish that this is what i came up with now i'm going to go over all of this semi-fast but i still want you guys to have a proper understanding of why i chose everything so i hope you understand uh when i'm going over it uh why i do it the way that i do so i went with frost bolt frost armor frost nova cone of cold and ice block and then in the frost talents i took ice shards which increases the critical strike damage bonus of my frost bolt cone of cold and frost nova by 100 percent i took piercing ice which is going to increase the damage done by all my frost spells by nine percent i took shatter which is a big point of the build in general and it's going to increase the critical strike chance of my mage spells against frozen targets by 50 percent and then we took fingers of frost which basically is going to give my frost shock Cone of Cold and Frost Nova a 15% chance to make my next two Frost Bolts automatically crit. I mean, that's just the basic way of translating it. We also took Ice Barrier and then Empowered Frost Bolt, which makes my Frost Bolt take 15% of my spell power and adds it to the damage of my Frost Bolt spell, which is pretty good. Now, in the Paladin Tree, you can see we actually took quite a lot of things as well. I took three out of three in Touched by the Light, first of all. That's going to increase my spell damage by 15% of my strength. And that's going to be pretty solid because we plan to go 150 points in the strength right off the bat. We also took Seal of Wisdom. I'm not exactly sure how mana is going to be with this character. Character. And because of that, we might have to adjust the build as we go along. But I do think Seal of Wisdom might be able to at least help. And what it's going to do is give all of my melee attacks a chance to restore 4% of my max mana. And that's a pretty big deal. Because of that, I also chose Judgment of Wisdom. It's all blue, and so it kind of goes with the ice theme. But I don't know if I'm going to need the Judgment. I might be good with just the seal, but I might need the Judgment as well. Basically, it's going to return some of my mana when I use it by giving each of my attacks a chance to restore 2% of my base mana. I also chose Blessing of Might, Divine Protection, Hammer of Justice, Hand of Freedom, and Cleanse. Now, in the Shaman Tree, we have quite a lot of things we picked up, so I'm going to go over the abilities over here first. We took Wind Shear, Frost Shock, which is a big, big point of the build. We took Call of the Elements, which I'm sure very few people do totem builds, so I hope this is interesting. And now, as a result of this, I took one Earth, one Fire, one Wind, and one Water Totem. That way, I could drop all four with just using this one ability. And then the idea is I need to be keeping these four totems up. The totems we chose are Strength of the Earth Totem, Flame Tongue Totem, Wind Fury Totem, and Mana Spring Totem. So you can see we have quite a lot of ways to keep our mana up, and I'm hoping it's enough. We also chose Frost Brand Weapon, which is a big point of the build as well. Water Walking, just because I had an extra uh, AE left over. We took Reincarnation. We took uh, Lesser Healing Wave, 
which is going to synergize with Maelstrom Weapon, and then we also took Water Shield. Again, lots and lots of ways to maintain mana. We might not need them all, and that will leave up uh, additional options in the future. Now, in this tree, we took the Elemental Devastation Talent. This is another big point of contention for the build, because it's going to allow my non-periodic offensive spell crits, which is basically my my spells, my Frost Shocks, my Frost Bolts. And my Frost Bolts are going to crit almost every time they go off. To increase the chance I get a Critical Strike with my melee attacks by 9, percent so that's a really good hybrid talent to have but it synergizes especially with our build because we will be getting those guaranteed crits off with our frost spells we also took spirit weapons it's going to increase the damage caused by frost brand weapon by 30 percent and then we took mental dexterity another hybrid talent increasing my melee attack power by 100 percent of my intellect frozen power increasing the damage of frost shock by 10 percent and every single time i use frost shock i will root my target in ice for five seconds i do believe believe this root counts when uh, factoring in my mage spells for the shatter bonus and that's a really really big deal uh, for things like frostbolt and cone of cold we also took five out of five in mental quickness again this is another routine hybrid talent it's going to increase my bonus spell damage by an amount equal to 15 percent of my melee attack power and then the bread and butter of the build is three out of three in maelstrom weapon so this is going to give me a chance when i deal damage with a melee weapon to uh, make my frostbolt instant cast so I have to get to five stacks with this and it will make my Frostbolt instant cast. However, it also makes my lesser healing wave instant cast. So there's some synergy with that as well. Now, lastly, we have the warrior tree. And I went with a very basic overpower mortal strike setup here because I just needed some melee uh, synergy, but I needed it to be in a way that was going to use as few talents as possible while still being effective. I tried builds that went more into the bleed and pale ren side of things, and I also thought about just spamming sinister strike or hemorrhage, but I decided that didn't fit as well with my class theme, right? So uh, obviously there might be better ways to go about this, but I thought this was at least going to fit the theme. So we took overpower, charge, battle stance, and rend. A very simple and basic taste for blood setup again we took three out of three in taste for blood this is going to give my rend a 100% chance to allow me to use overpower uh, for nine seconds and increase its damage by 10% overpower typically requires that the target dodges you before it can be used but again with taste for blood I can skip that uh, requirement we also took two out of two in improved overpower that's going to make my overpower basically always crit. Uh, we took one in sweeping strikes. That's going to give me some AoE because we do lack that outside of just Cone of Cold. Mortal Strike. That's going to be my big hitting ability and reduce the healing effectiveness on my opponent by 50%. We took Strength of Arms. This is going to increase my strength and stamina by 2% and my expertise by 2, but it's also going to give my Mortal Strike 20% extra damage and cost 10 less rage after using overpower. That's a really big deal. We also took 2 out of 2 in Unrelenting Assault. This just reduces the cooldown of my overpower and increases the damage of it by 20%, so it's more spammable. And when I strike somebody with overpower while they're casting or healing, it will actually reduce their magical damage and healing for 6 seconds by 50%. So I really think that kind of plays into my idea of being a frost warrior who's slowing my opponents and preventing them from uh doing magical things with my totems and stuff it, it just seems cool to me and then three out of three it improved mortal strike making my mortal strike 10 percent stronger reducing its cooldown and increasing the healing effect on my targets by 10 negative 10 percent it also adds a slow so i'm slowing them guaranteed my opponents will not be able to move when i'm against them so that's going to be the build that we are going for guys and of course we might be able to get rid of some of these mana talents mana and, uh, abilities rather along the way it depends if we need it or not but uh, we'll have to see so if you guys have any recommendations let me know but keep in mind we're trying to keep to the class theme okay guys so right now I'm actually level 10 and uh, what I would actually like to do is start the video on a foot where I'm actually playing uh, parts of my class that I actually tend to play at max level so I'm gonna zip in time to level 20 so i have frost brand weapon and frost shock and we're going to be using that to start our journey hope you guys appreciate that and don't mind missing levels 1 through 20 too much but i feel like you'd much rather watch me start there rather than uh spam sinister strike for 19 levels so hope you guys are ready for that and i will see you guys right now what is up guys okay so let's take a look at the character real quick we have the following spells 
Battle Stance, Charge, Overpower, and Rend. And then we have Sinister Strike. We have in the Elemental Combat, Frost Shock. And then Frost Brand Weapon. Frost Armor and Frost Nova. And then Lesser Healing Wave. So the character's actually been doing very, very well. We actually put out quite a lot of damage, which surprised me, honestly. And, and I, don't, I don't know why I'm getting mail right now from my character from another account. I just sent it, and I don't think it should work that way, but I'll take it. Anyway, we have a little bit of money on this account now. But, uh, yeah, the damage has been really high, and we get Cone of Cold in two levels, I believe. Maybe it's one level, but that's very, very good for us, because that's going to add quite a lot of damage as well. And the playstyle has been incredibly fun, too. Alright, so one thing I did want to talk about real quick while I'm switching zones is why did I choose to be on the Alliance? So if you guys take a look at my community poll that I put up about five or six days ago, you'll see that I asked you guys what faction do you prefer the alliance or the horde and then you might be wondering if it was horde which it was uh why would i choose to be alliance so if you take a look at the percentages 41 percent of you chose alliance and 59 percent of you chose horde and quite honestly 41 percent was way higher than i think many of us expected one thing i need you guys to understand is 1300 votes proportioned to my subscriber count is a lot of people that's a lot of people interacting with uh, the community and that's actually I can't even wrap my head around 1,300 people caring enough about what I ask right so 41% of 1,300 is around what you know 550 people something like that that's a lot of people that play alliance and also play on this server and uh, voted on my thing <laughs> and I have to say that's worth it to me it's a change of environment, it's a change of scenery and play style and questing, and quite frankly, due to the fact that the Alliance vote was so high, when the Horde have everything going for them, makes me think some people may have voted Horde just because it's better and not because they truly prefer it. So we're going to give it a try, and uh, I got to be honest with you guys. I don't regret it. All right, guys, now we are going to get our mount, and this is a very big deal because I don't play on the Laughing Skull server often, and on this specific account, I don't already have a level 60. It's on my other account, my original account. So uh, we have a mount, and it's the Ram mount, which I don't think I've used in years, which is just crazy to me. So next time you guys see me, I should be in the wetlands. That's where we're going to try to quest for now, and uh, we're going to try to get to level 25 so we can start using Taste for Blood and really use this build in the way it was meant to be played. So one thing I realized is that I didn't actually pick a 3 AE talent, you know, like a level 60 talent, and that's because none of them jumped out at me immediately as being a Frost Warrior talent. I don't think it matters for my overall DPS and uh, viability at max level, but if it does, I can just pick something like Feral Spirits or Blade Storm, something simple that doesn't really impact too much on the fantasy, but still adds some damage, but I don't think it should matter too much. All right, guys, we are level 25 now which means we can take three talent points in taste for blood and uh, I'll go ahead and put my other two talent points into shatter for now in the frost mage tree but this is it guys this is the moment where our build truly starts shaping up in the way that we plan for it to be played and the next level as well because we'll have cone of cold which I think I uh, thought I was higher level earlier in the video but now I'm 25 right so here is what we're going to do. We are going to find a place to showcase how the build plays, and I think I'm going to try to find a fight with another player too, a risk fight. So uh, prepare for that, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, we actually have a fight right here on the Laughing Skull server, and that's because I wanted to see how my build might do at this level. He is three levels higher than us, so we might miss our abilities, but it should be fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how it goes. I'll let him know I'm ready. All right, let's do it. All right, got the overpower. Stun him during the Blood Fury. Frost overpower. Some things are missing. Miss. All right, but we do have a heal. So it's not the end of the world. He's going to Shadow Bolt. I'm going to charge here. Go for the heal. Get that rend back up. And we got him and gained a level off it to 8,000 XP. And we have our Cone of Cold now. So that's a GG. And that's kind of how the build plays right now. 
So we actually did end up dueling him again with Cone of Cold, and in that fight, uh, especially because we were one level higher, we just completely decimated him. It was a lot better. I wish I had recorded that, uh, so I don't even know why I'm saying it. But now we're in the Barrens, and I thought I might as well make use of this. Uh, as you can see in the chat, I'm looking for people to fight me. I, I would like to showcase the build, and I want more people to come and play Laughing Skull. One thing I'm thinking about doing is hosting a tournament. It would be a low level tournament. I would specify the level bracket. It would probably be level 10 uh, because that way anybody can make an account and try their best at it. And the winner would get gold on um, the realm of their choice between Laughing Skull and Shadow Song. Those are the realms I play on the most and therefore those are the realms that I might actually have money on. It's only going to be 100 gold, but especially if you're a new player, that can be quite a lot. If you're an older veteran player, maybe you just want to uh, be on video winning an entire tournament full of players, right? So if that's something you guys would be interested in, let me know. I can easily host it. Uh, all I have to do is set a date. And I'll post a link on the community part of my YouTube page where you can easily sign up for it. It would probably be either 32 or 64 players. Uh, it depends on how many people are actually willing to do it. So uh, keep in mind that for the future. And it will be on the Laughing Skull Realm, so you can pick your ability. So min-max that stuff, okay guys, if it happens. Alright guys, let's go ahead and try to beat Belly Grub. Uh, free XP, right? I'm in Red Ridge, still looking for people to fight, but it's really, really late at night. You can see it's 1.30 in the morning. So uh, let's see what happens. Rend first. Basically using everything that has a cooldown. Get that rend off. So SS is just a filler. There we go. That was really fast. And if you remember any of my other characters, um, that sometimes doesn't go so well. So that was pretty good. The basic gist of the build is you want to use things like Cone of Cold and Frost Shock on cooldown, keep Rend up and use Overpower whenever it pops up, and then use Sinister Strike as a filler. So, because I might not be able to find anybody, I'm going to showcase the strength of this build by tackling something quite difficult for a solo player. Something that I couldn't do earlier on a wild card build. So, I will see you guys in a moment when I'm about to do that. Oh, hell yes, guys. Somebody right here, and he's about to have the worst day of his life. He's just trying to farm those things, but we're going to criminal intent this guy and go straight in. Get that rend off. Bam. Nope. Bam. <laughs> okay. He's dead, and we have unclaimed belongings here and a battered chest. So we got bingles, flying gloves, and linen cloth, and the battered chest, dwarven mage staff of the eagle. Okay. Okay. All right, I'll take it. And a lesser healing potion as well, which I can put that on my bar. So we found somebody and we got to gank him in the true McDouble style. That's so good. I'm so happy. Okay, guys, we're going to try to go ahead and solo Gathelzog and Singe. Now, I was able to clear some ads and it was a, a bit of a process, right? But I think... I think we can do this. This is something that is very difficult to do. Typically, you need two, three, maybe even four people, depending on your build, to do it. Uh, but without the ads, I think it might be soloable. So I'm going to go on Singe first, and I'm going to try to CC Gathelzog. That is the current plan. So uh, let's uh, let's go for it. All right, he's CC'd. Go for the Rend. Make sure he can't get off any of his big fireballs because he's the one that does the real damage here. Maybe run around this guy. Right when that's about to go off, I'm going to wind shear it and he's dead. All right, now we're just on Gathelzog. This should not be a problem. I think we can solo him fairly easily. Maybe not, guys. Maybe not. I'm actually going to go for a heal here, just in case. Overpower. I'm going to reapply Rend after that GCD. And Cone of Cold. Got him, guys. Head of Gathelzog. That went pretty well. Oh, shit. Well, rest in peace. Just accept it. I kneel before you. Just, just end it. Just end it. Do it! Just do it! Thank you. Okay, guys, this guy has offered to 1v1 me, so as soon as my res sickness goes away, because apparently resing at the closest town on non-wildcard realms results in res sickness, uh, we'll 1v1 him. Okay, let's do it. Not gonna be a fight for loot, I guess. Just gonna be a normal duel, uh, but it should go fairly well for us. So we're gonna start with the charge, rend, cone of cold, sinister strike, 
Yeah, I'm not, I don't have a trinket, so I just have to take that. He's about to die anyway. <laughs> I feel so bad. Well, that's what happens when you have 392 HP. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, it's been a little bit difficult to find fights. It's my fault, I guess, for playing so late at night, uh, 2 a.m. now. But uh, <laughs> I'm very excited to get started on this server and have a lot of fun with it. I encourage all of you to join the Laughing Skull server and just create your own custom class. Have a good time. And let me tell you, if you are in between probably levels 25 to even as high as 40 or 50, I will most likely be advertising in chat that I want some fights, some 1v1s. And uh, if you happen to see it and you PM me, you will get that 1v1. So, so if any of you have just been itching to fight me at any point, and trust me, enough people have PM'd me and asked me for me to, to think that that might be the case, uh, go ahead, make a character on this server, and come and fight McDoubles. Come fight me, guys. I need it. I need it for the content, and you will be on video. So... I will see you guys in the next video, and we will hopefully make quite a bit more progress and have more fights. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. So I will see you guys in the next one. McDoubles out.